You know, it's funny how wrong an artist can be about his own work. Now, the one composition of Tchaikovsky's that he really detested was his Nutcracker Suite, which is probably the most popular thing he ever wrote. Incidentally, uh, you won't see any Nutcracker on the screen. There's nothing left of him but the title. And now we're going to hear a piece of music that tells a very definite story. It's a very old story, one that goes back almost 2,000 years. A legend about a sorcerer who had an apprentice. He was a bright young lad, uh, very anxious to learn the business. As a matter of fact, he was a little bit too bright uh, because he started practicing some of the boss's best magic tricks before learning how to control them. When Igor Stravinsky wrote his ballet, The Rite of Spring, his purpose was, in his own words, to express primitive life. And so Walt Disney and his fellow artists have taken him at his word. Instead of presenting the ballet in its original form as a simple series of tribal dances, they have visualized it as a pageant, as the story of the growth of life on Earth. It's a coldly accurate reproduction of what science thinks went on during the first few billion years of this planet's existence. So now imagine yourselves out in space, billions and billions of years ago, looking down on this lonely, tormented little planet spinning through an empty sea of nothingness. The symphony that Beethoven called the pastoral, his sixth, is one of the few pieces of music he ever wrote that tells something like a definite story. He was a great nature lover, and in this symphony, he paints a musical picture of the day in the country. Now, of course, the country that Beethoven described was the countryside with which he was familiar. But his music covers a much wider field than that, and so Walt Disney has given the Pastoral Symphony a mythological setting. Now we're going to do one of the most famous and popular ballets ever written, The Dance of the Hours from Ponchielli's opera La Gioconda. It's a pageant of the hours of the day. All this takes place in the great hall with its garden beyond of the palace of Duke Alvisa, a Venetian nobleman. The last number in our Fantasia program is a combination of two pieces of music so utterly different in construction and mood that they set each other off perfectly. The first is A Night on Bald Mountain by one of Russia's greatest composers, Modest Mussorgsky. The second is Franz Schubert's immortal Ave Maria. Musically and dramatically, we have here a picture of the struggle between the profane and the sacred. 